Magna delle succate la sto limone, i russaci che a te ti piace. Hey there, this is uh, Lecture 1 in Chemistry 101. This particular video it just has a bunch of administrative information, so there's a fair amount of fluff in here if you are taking the course for real. However, some of the information here might be important. So we are going to cover in the next collection of videos chapters 1, 2, and 3 in your textbook. So it doesn't say 3, but I just wrote it in. I'm your teacher. My name is Paul Denise. This is my personal slash business email address. You can expect emails from me to come from this email address. I also have a goodwin.edu email address. I do not check it very often. However, if you send an email to my goodwin.edu email address, it will be automatically forwarded to my personal slash business email address. So I will see it as soon as I check my, my regular email address anyway. The only reason that I mentioned the, the both of them is that if you're expecting an email from me, you should be on the lookout for an email from this address, from the top address and not the bottom address. If you're in the online class, there are ways of taking attendance. Basically, you have to submit graded assignments and that will establish attendance. My recommendation is to come to class. If you're in the online class, it's not immediately clear what coming to class means. What I would say that it means is listen to the videos, all the corny jokes, all, all the junk that comes with it, and, you know, do the work. You know, 80% of success is showing up. So uh, a, a large portion of your success uh, or your your potential success is listening to the videos, doing the work. And then, you know, hopefully the other 20% will come along um, because you understand the material very well. Uh, let's see. I already mentioned that you will get emails from me, but they will come from my personal account. I used to have a course website. I don't anymore. So I despise Blackboard, but Blackboard has broken me, so I pretty much use it, in particular for grades. So if you're looking for your grades, they're going to be there. If you are looking for videos like this one, the links will be there as well. Uh, office hours. That's pretty much by appointment, especially for the online people since everyone has a slightly different schedule. The way that I would mention, uh, uh, the way that I would describe how to deal with office hours is you send me a list of days and times that work for you. I will try to find at least one day and time that matches what works for you and then we will find a time to work together and you can either come in and we can meet for extra help or alternatively we can meet, uh, you know, by teleconference over Skype or something like that. If you read the syllabus, there is a detailed description of the grading percentages, how much every exam counts, how much the, uh, the lab assignments count, how much quizzes count, that type of thing. If you have to, if you're going to be late for a deadline for a quiz or a test or something like that, and you need some kind of makeup, please let me know ahead of time. As long as it's a legitimate excuse and you let me know ahead of time, it shouldn't be a problem. Where it's going to be a problem is if uh, you're going on vacation and, you know, which is not really a legitimate excuse, or if you let me know after the fact, then we're going to have a problem but hopefully we will not have a problem. Uh, if you are in the hybrid section, apparently there's a new hybrid section, and you have to come into campus uh, for the lab, you're going to need safety goggles or safety glasses. You can't wear open-toed shoes, can't wear shorts. That's probably not a big deal in the winter, but uh, it will be in the spring and summer. You can't bring food or drink into, uh, into the lab. And it's probably not a good idea to be late because I will give a quiz almost every week at the beginning of lab that's based on the previous week's lab. So if you're late, you're going to be having a difficult time taking the quiz. As far as the course is concerned, in my on-ground class, it is as interactive as I can possibly make it, which means that I call on people uh, usually at random. I try not to embarrass you. Mostly it's to see how well I'm doing explaining things up at the board and also to force you to put your phone down and stop texting every once in a while. I know that's not the easiest thing to do sometimes. I would probably be texting too, but that's one way of getting you to pay attention is to call on you at random. <coughs> Excuse me. In general, I'm not a big fan of memorization. Because I'm not a big fan of memorization, I will give you equations and things like that so that you don't have to memorize them. That does not mean that you will never have to memorize anything in the course. There's still a fair amount to memorize, but I will try to keep it to a minimum. There will be a fair amount of math. 
the way that I think of this course is it's basically a math course with some extra symbols thrown in. Some people like math, some people don't. You know, I, I just figure it should be put out there. Uh, I don't want people to have an illusion that it's going to be something that it isn't. There will be a fair amount of math. Hopefully there will also be a fair amount of thinking. So not so much memorization, but hopefully more thinking involved. And this is a phrase that gets said in my family a lot that I kind of like. In school, you get the lesson and then you get the test. In life, it's the other way around. So luckily for you, this is school and you will get the lessons as long as you listen to them first and then you'll get the tests or the quizzes. Take advantage of that because as you probably know in life it ain't gonna be so easy. Another thing I should point out is if you don't understand something ask. This is printed in huge print, gets its own slide. The reason is because this is really important. If you're in the online class and you're listening to the videos and I'm not making any sense and you play it over and over again and I'm still not making any sense, what you should do is you should, uh, you know, send me an email and say, look, in uh, video number 12, in minute 12 point, uh, you know, at the 12th minute of the video, um, I don't know what you're talking about. And I guarantee that if you don't understand what I'm talking about, there are other people out there who don't understand as well. So it's important for you to try to clarify anything that doesn't make any sense to you. And, and I will try my best to, uh, to, make, uh, to make things understandable. Academic honesty, so let's see. There are three sort of different things on this slide. First, I guess let me talk about the bottom one. Read the syllabus. It's worth reading. Um, there's a lot of detail in there that you can get. That, that will help you. Calculators. I have a feeling that everybody or many of you have a calculator that costs about six billion dollars. It looks like it could run a rocket ship and it probably is capable of doing your laundry and walking your dog and about 5,000 other things and it's almost always complete overkill for what you're going to need for the course. However, there are going to be some features of that fancy calculator that you will need for the course. The problem that I encounter a lot is that the students have the six billion dollar calculator but they are unable to use some of the features that they need to use for the course. So if you have trouble uh, with your calculator you have to contact me or you have to contact somebody. Me would probably be the most responsible party and, and say, you know what, I don't know how to do X, Y, and Z. I don't know how to uh, enter numbers using scientific notation in my calculator. Could you please show me? And then I will do my best to show you either in person during extra help uh, by Skype or, or some other uh, teleconference method. So keep that in mind. Oh, and last but not least, academic honesty. There is probably a paragraph or two in your syllabus that describes all the all of the rules and details about uh, being honest academically. Um, if I have a rule of thumb about academic honesty, and that is, if you would be embarrassed to tell your mother how you did your work, don't do it that way. So uh, keep that in mind. Mm -hmm.